You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. The Magician in the Keyhole Bar by Heather Santo Harlow wiped up a water ring and surveyed the room. Six patrons sat on stools surrounding the keyhole-shaped bar, five men and one woman, all over the age of sixty. He stood on the other side, arranging glassware and refilling drinks. Hey, Arlo, Sal said, picking up his beer. Ever find out what's behind that door in the basement? The bar's owner claimed he'd never been given a key. None of the local patrons, not even the old-timers, knew where the door led either. It had remained locked and a mystery since the bar had opened five decades ago. Not yet, Arlo said, although he fantasized it was a place filled with excitement, adventure, and the unknown. At the head of the keyhole, the rich widow abate, not a day under ninety-one and dressed to the nines, down Prosecco like water. Her diamonds flashed in the low amber light. She winked at Arlo and shook her empty glass. Coming right up, Eloise. Any girl scooped you up yet? She asked in a husky retired showgirl voice. No, ma'am, he answered. I've been asking you to marry me since I came back and you keep turning me down. The widow waved a dismissive hand, but her cheeks flushed with pleasure. It was a common exchange between the pair and one she never tired of. Oh, you flatter an old woman, she said. But really, Arlo, a tall, handsome young man such as yourself shouldn't have trouble finding love. Tall he was, thought Arlo, nearly six and a half feet. The handsome part was, however, debatable. And he also had a bum knee. Now you flatter me, he said, returning with her refill, his limp almost imperceptible. Suddenly. A magician burst through the front door, followed by a cold burst of October air. Arlo did a double take, not quite believing his eyes. The man was pale and thin, white gloves covering long slender fingers. He removed the gloves with a flourish, throwing back his satin cape. Everyone at the bar froze, as if the strange man had cast a spell. Good evening, Arlo said. May I help you? The magician tipped his elegant top hat at Arlo. I am between acts, he explained and looking for a place to spend a few minutes, possibly have a drink while I pass the time. You've come to the right place, Arlo said, gesturing to an empty seat. Ah, very good. The magician wore a vintage suit under the cape, a white, high-collar dress shirt, red cummerbund, and black pants. Arlo watched him closely, fascinated. He moved with rhythmic grace, so light on his feet they barely seemed to touch the floor. What'll it be? Arlo asked, as the magician slid onto a bar stool. A shot of grappa! This seemed to break the spell. The other patrons went back to their drinks, and Arlo poured the shot. Sin Sin! The magician took the shot Arlo placed in front of him, raised it. He downed it in one quick gulp. Eloise nodded approvingly from across the bar. Another? Arlo asked. No, thank you. The magician waved him off and placed several folded bills on the bar. Arlo watched his hands like fluttering doves, transfixed. A quarter appeared between the magician's fingers. Keep the change, he said, and allow me to perform a trick for you as an extra tip. Okay, Arlo said, intrigued. The magician handed him the coin. Please read the date aloud, he instructed. Arlo inspected the coin. 1990, he said. Anything personally significant or special about that year? The magician asked. Uh... Arlo scratched his head. I was born that year. Perfect. Now make a fist around the coin and hold your arm straight out like this. Arlo did as he was told. The magician waved his hand around Arlo's closed fist, chanting softly. The other patrons looked on, unsure what to make of this impromptu magic show. Suddenly, the coin became very hot, like a burning coal in his hand. Ouch! Arlo yelped. He opened his hand and released a pale blue flame. The quarter fell to the bar. Please read the date aloud, the magician repeated. Arlo picked up the quarter. A black smudge, like a scorch, marked George Washington's face. The date had changed. 2011, Arlo said. Anything personally significant or special about that year? The magician asked again. Yeah, Arlo said. I blew my knee out rounding third at a college semifinal game. Ended my baseball career in any chance at the pros. The magician nodded gravely as if he understood something Arlo hadn't spoken aloud. Hang on to that coin, he said. I think you'll find it useful in the near future. 
With the final twirl of his cape, the magician disappeared back into the night. Arlo slipped the coin into the front pocket of his pants, more confused than anything by the strange visit. He didn't give the magician or the coin another thought until he was closing up later that night. The quarter burned, fire poker hot once again, and he yelped, reaching into his pocket. The quarter was gone. He now held an elaborate skeleton key in his hand. Arlo only knew one door with a lock that might fit such a key. He bounded down the stairs into the damp sublevel below the restaurant. In a back corner, partially obscured by stacked boxes, was the mysterious door. Arlo shoved the boxes out of his way, hands shaking as he slid the key into the lock. He turned it and heard a click. The door creaked open. On the other side was a world of watercolor splendor. Golden hills rolling under a lilac sky. In the distance, a castle with three large towers rose up into the clouds. Doves cooed and took flight, wings flapping, or was it the sound of a twirling magician's cape? Arlo took one last look around the basement before stepping over the threshold and into the unknown. We hope you enjoyed The Magician and the Keyhole Bar by Heather Santo, read by Kenneth Tynan. If you'd like to learn more about the author and narrator of this story or make a donation to them, follow the story page link in the description. If you would like to submit a story for consideration or apply to be a narrator, a link to our submission guidelines is in the description. This story is copyrighted 2020 by the Centropic Oracle. <laughs>